Um, I have noticed that, you know, I've met a lot of different females who has their dad in their life, like solely has her dad in their life. And they're independent at the same time. But I noticed that the difference between a female who just had their mother who was independent and a female who had her father who's independent, the girl with the father is not bitter versus the female with the mother who is very bitter and like solely like against men. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Um, do you think that black women will eventually all try, like intentionally, tap into being more feminine? Or do you think they just really want to ride this masculine wave? I'm doing this because I, I pray to God that that happens. <laughs> that's, that's, that's mission number one for this channel. However, <clears throat> statistically speaking, 80% of uh, re retail decision making is made by women, meaning that 80% of people buying things are women. Yeah. So that means, you know, not only is the woman spending her money, she's spending the dude's money too. She's the one going to the grocery store, doing this, doing that, doing this. And that's the way it's always been. Like that, that's no, um, that doesn't really mean much. But what it does mean is in a capitalistic society, you know, I used to work in marketing. The entire marketing apparatus is aimed at the female. Right. It's aimed <laughs> at gaining and retaining her attention. And the best way to gain and retain people's attention is to just, you know, you are God's gift to everything. <laughs> and because you're God's gift to everything, you deserve everything, right? So this idea is being reinforced by capitalism. This idea is being reinforced by sexual attention, many of DMs. <laughs> this idea is being reinforced by your fellow women around you. Yes, girl, you're 300 pounds, but you, you working at 300 pounds. <laughs> You know, so it's created this idea that there's nothing wrong, at least with me, and I don't have to change. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, age and life will slap you in the face, and eventually you'll realize that that was bullshit. Yeah. But the problem and what makes me sad is everything right now is out to get you in that way, you know? So Derrick Jackson, for instance, he didn't invent the wheel, he just wrote it. He just did it. <laughs> I, I, low key, I can't even be mad at dude. Cause he literally just like, he saw the river going and he jumped in that motherfucker. That's all he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> you know, so until women are willing to commit themselves and black women specifically, commit themselves to a central identity. Because a lot of times you have conversation with women and the first thing they say, I don't know if they sent y'all a memo or whatever, but it's like, I don't want to speak for all black women. Well, then who speaks for all black women? Who, for real, like who speaks for all black women? We can't. <laughs> y'all think you're individuals. Can't nobody tell y'all shit. So until black women are willing to come together as a collective and say that these are our standards, and whenever somebody's out of line, we'll discipline them or we'll kick them out instead of embracing this person and embracing that person, embracing that person. And now the, the, the black female image, and this is the part that really pisses me off personally. The black female image is the same as it was during Jim Crow and antebellum slavery. The Jezebel, that's the hoe, the Mamie, the woman who takes care of everybody else but herself, or the sapphire, the angry black woman. Those are the tropes that white people made up to categorize our women. And now our women are finding power and identity in that. Women were complaining about pimps. They left their pimps, 
And now they're on world star pimping themselves. Yeah. That's what female empowerment has turned into. I want to be able to exploit myself. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, can't even fem- dis- I can't disagree. Where, where are the female OGs? That's my question. Where are the female OGs saying, you know what, baby, that's, that's not the way. Where are they? Unheard. Kept quiet. Not going viral. I'll see, you know, not that it's, I'm saying that, you know, like dancing and twerking is bad, but to see and to see like more women supporting, you know, being sexual on TV and half naked almost just as much as the men, it just doesn't sit right with me because I thought that we were supposed to be like loving our bodies, but not doing it for other people but ourselves and I get like the whole body image thing but there are like I feel like there should be some do's and don'ts you know like it's mostly for attention and they'll say oh I'm not doing it for attention then what are you doing it for and there's never an answer I'm just doing it for myself because I love myself but if you love yourself you don't have to do that you don't have to like seek Validation. You don't have to seek attention if you love yourself. You know who Andrew Schultz is? No. He does a podcast called Flagrant Idiots. And he said something one time that I thought was, was brilliant, actually. He said, you know, a lot of these IG thoughts, I think is what he called them. <laughs> they say that, you know, posting naked pictures and stuff like that is art. And he was like, art is a commodity that's for sale. Wow. Art is a commodity that is for sale. So this magical (laughs) shit we put on it and try to, oh, it's just art. No, you're selling yourself. Just call it what it is. But again, cognitive dissonance. It's, 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 It's sweeter to call it art. Yeah. That's deep. (laughs) That's deep. Ask me one last question. (laughs) Hmm, Anything. Take your time. <laughs> this is good. I think so, too. Hmm. Let me see. What do you think a father should do or what role should he play to help his daughter be more feminine and to avoid living in masculine energy? I think that's a fantastic question. I think it's a difficult question because, you know, a lot of a lot of fathers, we say that, uh, You know, we want our daughters to be able to be self-sufficient and not need anybody. So even the good dads raise their daughters to be independent and in a way masculine. And I think part of the reason is because men's job in a family dynamic is to teach their children how to survive. Women's job is to teach their children why to survive. Um, But I think the best thing a man can do is just model what a man looks like. Model, set the precedent for what type of male-female dynamic is acceptable and, and, and anything outside of this is not. That means that from the way you treat and talk to her to the way you treat and talk to her mother are incredibly vital. And I know it's not always easy. <laughs> I know it's not always easy, but in a perfect world, that is that is the goal. Um, You also have some situations where the dad was so good that no man can ever be my dad. And then you have women operating in their masculine because nobody can ever live up to their Michael Jordan of a dad. Right. Um, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 I think. Teaching your your daughter to be pragmatic, too, is important. 
and teaching her because you, you have a lot of princesses, right? And the reason they're princesses is because they live in this fantasy and nobody fans the flames of that fantasy like their daddy. <laughs> but ultimately it leads to her destruction. So you have to be her, her groundedness too. You know, like maybe this has to make sense. Um, but that's the best I can come up with. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out as I go. Um, I have noticed that, you know, I've met a lot of different females who has their dad in their life, like solely has her dad in their life. And they're independent at the same time. But I noticed that the difference between a female who just had their mother who was independent and a female who had her father who's independent, the girl with the father is not bitter. Versus the female with the mother who is very bitter and like solely like against men. Why do you think that is? Because she doesn't hate her dad. Like she hasn't had a reason to. And even if she's had bad experiences with men, she still has her dad to look up to. Because, you know, she's going to see her dad as all men, honestly. Because that's kind of how like if we're lacking that father figure. Most of the time, like, niggas ain't shit. We automatically think about our dad because he wasn't there. So then we stem that feeling towards everybody. That's very true. Like, parents set the precedent. For boys, the mother sets the precedent of, like, Yeah, how like, they most of the, them. you know, the guys that say don't like black women, it's because they don't like their mother. Or they have something against their mother or the way she treated them. And she treated them that way because of the father. And it's the same way with a female. Like, oh, my dad wasn't there, or he doesn't act right, he doesn't treat me right. So the moment you start getting treated bad by this one black guy or this other black guy, they're all bad. Because it's all you think about is how your dad is not shit either. And, and I think, you know, going back to my uh, earlier point, I think that's why maturity is so important. Because it, it's often easy for them, to, for people to say, my mom wasn't good because of my dad. Right. People rarely say my dad wasn't good because of my mom. Facts. And no, a lot of times I've never heard that. <laughs> and a lot of times it's more nuanced than that. It's it's first we have to start from generational trauma. Like that's why I start every conversation. But second, things are complex. You might have heard your daddy wasn't shit, but it might be more than that. It might be he was trying to stay away from your crazy ass mama. <laughs> And a lot of times, most of the time, um, because naturally our mother nurtures us. So it don't matter how bad your mother is at a certain you know, age and level. You're just blinded and you just see her as innocent. It's just natural. It's, that's what anybody. It's just you have to like take the glasses off you know, or put the glasses on. To actually really see your mother as a person and not a mother. And then you might be like, maybe dad was right. You know, because a lot of times we don't see the flaws in our parents at all. Because we just see them as innocent because they're parents. We don't think they do no wrong or anything like that. But it comes to a certain point where we had to separate the two. Do you think that's why women typically never think they're wrong because they never saw their mom being wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, damn. <laughs> and then if she's a single mother and you don't see her as wrong, then she's just always right, regardless. So you're carrying that. My mama was right, so I'm right too. Mm. I think that has a lot I'm to guilty. do. <laughs> I think that has a lot to do with like uh, the creation of simps as well, like the super feminine guys who get run over and mistreated by women because they gravitate towards women like their moms. And they, they position the woman as the authority figure in every dynamic. And I've learned 
in a ma- masculine feminine dynamic women don't want to be the authority figure and whenever they we have to they lose talk it about it good. it feels good it feels good but it only feels good for that moment after a while we tired we wore out you know it feels good for a little bit but after a while you're not going to feel like yourself anymore you're going to wonder like who am I and then some people just continue to push because they're so used to doing that and they lost themselves (laughs) what kind of son do you want to raise I think the most important thing I want my son to know if I raise a son is how to be understanding and not like self-centered, selfish towards himself, but not self-centered, if that makes sense. 